no. Can you all see my screen? All right. Um, let's do it full screen. Okay, so hello. I am Mafin Arkan and I will be talking with you guys about a COVID-19 dashboard that I built um, with Phoenix Live View. So I basically built that to uh, learn a bit about Live View when it just got out uh, like six or eight months ago. And then I forgot about it completely. And then recently I just got a uh, renewed, uh, renewed interest in the topic and I build that and I added some more stuff to it. So what we will do today is uh, talk a little bit about this thing, uh, this dashboard, how it works, and then take you to a demo and a walkthrough. So during the demo and walkthrough, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, chat, you can type it in chat, or you can also um, unmute and ask, that's not a problem. Um, and I would like it, I would like to keep it short so that we have more time for interactions later on. So let's start. Um, so what we're going to do today, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is check out the dashboard, look some code and discuss some, some code. Um, so uh, why I did this. So when, when Live View first was announced, I was a little bit skeptical about it. Like why would we do anything like that? I mean, if we are to focus on how to improve Phoenix, we could do stuff like, like other stuff, like making, uh, putting in auth and other other things. So, and I was also a little bit skeptical, like how do you, how, how practical would it be to make um, front end uh, with Elixir and Phoenix? But so far, Elixir, anything that came uh, that got introduced to the language and the stack never failed me. So, I decided to take a stab at it and see how it works and uh, since dashboards are like uh, the easiest things to make when you're like uh, making making a system that are like front and back and are closer together and that was uh, COVID-19 just started so I thought like okay let's just do something on that and that's why I did it um, uh, then after a couple of days of tinkering with it I got bored and I just stopped it for a bit and then I got back. I, I I got back with it like uh, twenty days ago, and I figured that this would be a great topic to discuss with y'all. Um, so how does it look like? Okay, I will just. There are like some static images here. So this is the dashboard, uh, dashboard view, uh, the front, which is the the world view I call it, and this would be a detailed view, like when you click on a country, and you get information out of it. So you have a couple of really interesting UI stuff, like there is a calendar calendar view there is a there are some charts uh, pie charts tables okay so let's uh, discuss with what it does we all know about like uh, my idea was not just to uh, scrape from the web scrape a website and display it nor was it to like go and hit some csv and show that what i wanted to do is to have to have the data in my own rdbms so I already have an old database, my own database, and uh, a separate process would be responsible for pulling the sources from the data tables, uh, from the data sources. Like uh, for now, we have John Hopkins data set, and the process goes like the data set gets fetched by the module mapper. The module mapper responsibility would be to um, map the particular data set with the data fetcher and converter because. Uh, like if I have A, B, and C three data sets, three data sets will have three different structures of CSVs or JSON files. And those will be needed to send dispatched to the correct module that would transform that. So the module mapper gives it to the fetcher, fetcher transforms CSV, JSON, or whatever the module is into an Elixir map. And the Elixir map, and that map goes to a sanitizer to make sure that the all country names are like appropriate, like all the spelling mistakes in the country names are all like um, matched and injected and converted to the proper country name based on Elixir countries. And after sanitizer is done, um, it moves to a converter which reconfigures the sanitized data set into a data structure that matches closely to the database 
in this case, I used Ecto for it. And that Ecto gets written to the database. So there is a mixed task that does all that. For now, I'm just using the John Hopkins database. So it just, um, we just do a COVID-19 dot load and it loads all the data set that hasn't been loaded yet. So now I have, by this time, by this first row is done, I have my own database where I got all the data. Now, that's like the backend voodoo. Now comes front end where there are like a couple of queries, like the query service would just query all the uh, total number of recoveries, confirmed cases uh, based on countries or based on states or whatever have you and returns those to the two main pages, the dashboard lives and dashboard and detail live. So that that's where it comes, uh, that's where things get interesting because uh, dashboard live, like you can consider the structures of it like you would a React uh, structure, although I, I'm not sure how politically correct is that to say it. So a dashboard live is basically a container that contains multiple, like if you look into this picture, uh, can you all see my um, mouse cursor movement? All right, so here you have, this is a detailed view, right? So you have confirmed cases, deaths, recoveries, you have province table, you have world data chart. So all of these are components which receive data and paint the data by either calling JavaScript hooks where it's required or just by pure Elixir. And they communicate with each other via uh, messages. And those messages are handled by uh, like in the normal way that you would handle a process message, a gen server message. They just get handled by that. So this whole world is a dashboard, li dashboard live view. And this view contains several components uh, and they communicate with the database like you would communicate in a normal model view template architecture. Like uh, you would get a controller that, although it's not, not at all a controller, but you just get a function that would communicate database and return you the view and the view will hold it as an assigned state. Um, so it's very much, you, you, could, you could think in terms of React uh, but know that the states are managed in a different way. They, they are managed basically in a, in a process database and um, they can be distributed much easier than they would if they were in client-side database. So these are the two things. Um, so in the process, uh, my, my objective was never to make something and publish it or something. It's like, it was always to have an open source system that would just be out there and that would help me to learn more about um, Elixir live view. And uh, now that I don't use Elixir in my day-to-day -day work, uh, this would also keep, help me keep my, uh, my class sharpened. So this is not at all, this doesn't have any, um, any plans of being anything other than an open source project for educational purposes. And, um, I would thank the data sources, like all the, the data sources providers that helped me make this. All right. Okay. So who's ready for some demo and walkthrough? All right. Um, all right. I got time. So, no, oops. So now I will just get out of here. And so let's, oh, let's get started. So what we do is uh, we first, um, first, do, oh, wow, how do I change this? Um, uh, that's better. Okay. So mix. So first, let's see that if there are any new changes to the John Hopkins data set. Um, Git sub module. Yeah. Mix COVID 19 load. Let's load it, nothing because um, it's apparently up to date. So let's start this, All right? So we will start it here. All right, so here it is, um, the system, it has information for November 25th, which is yesterday, and all the data, 
all the data for yesterday. So if I click on previous, so the data changes. And if you see how the data changes, it'll it'll all the relevant data gets changed. The maps, the like the tables, and the interesting part is this, this is what I plan to do later on. Um, if I click start date, that's the first recorded case, uh, recorded date, which is January the 22nd. And if I click on, like, look at the look at the map. If I click on next, see what's happening with the map. So you can you can see like a fire kind of burning out. So so this is this how the, the whole infection rates are coming out. Like I can switch to confirmed and other other parts here like deaths. Good, we have a lot less death. So that's the map. This, this kind of is a heat map that shows you the spread of um, the clusters of uh, added cases on geographic area. And uh, this is like the world data on a pie chart, like how, like what percentage of are active, recovered, and what percentage are deaths. So this also changes, like if you look into the pie chart, this also changes. Uh, this is a, these are the fixed chart, are like the death, uh, recoveries, deaths, and things. So you can switch to logarithmic if you want. There are the date, which all the his data, which can like, you know, be sorted and searched. So um, new cases, active. Right, so uh, the other page was this page, I just added it today. So this might have a lot of errors. Um, I felt like I should have a detailed view before I start this talk. So I think it took me an hour to make this page. So this is the detail page. This is the detail page from Mauritania. Um, randomly clicked it. Uh, so this, these are the confirmed cases. Uh, let's go to, um, let's go to say Canada. Where is the search for Canada? There it is. Click. And we have Canada data here. So you can see, you know, you can sort of see the second wave coming in, like, like goes down and then start, start going up. Although I don't yet make guarantees about the data because there could have been some change, some errors to send when I'm, when I was sanitizing it. So the purpose was mostly to like show a data instead of like, uh, confirming about the accuracy of it. I'll be working on it later. So these are by province, like province or any area-based information. And these are summary by dates of a country. So uh, I intend to add two map pages here, like a chloropath map and uh, a map with those bubbles in it so that you can see what's happening in particular states, uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, so. This, this is the calendar so that you can quickly jump on separate date. I, I had some frustration with Balma's calendar component yesterday, and I decided that hey, I'm not gonna do any JavaScript calendar, I'm gonna just make one with Elixir instead. So the calendar component is 100% Elixir. This has no, no JavaScript at all. Um, the, the charts are like using Plotly JavaScript because I used to use Plotly when I was working with Python, so I have a soft, soft spot for it. So this is pretty, this, this was pretty good. You can also um, like focus and zoom. There's a lot of cool nifty stuff. Okay, so now that we had a small demo and uh, the, the code is up there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the link. You can um, run it. Um, you can run it and see for yourself. Uh, now we would talk a little bit about the code itself, like how things are created and how are like, how did this happen? Like what, how, what, how does this code look like? So, um, but before that, um, it, how many of you have any exposure with uh, Phoenix Live View? Can I, how do I know? Can I see, raise hands? No, um, can you just say plus one if you worked with um, Elixir before, uh, Live View before? And I'm gonna look for the chat, there it is. All right. The docs. Uh, uh, I can tell you. I think it's just uh, three, four people so far. Okay. Cool. Oh, not a lot. Uh, so let's. Oh, that'll be interesting. So uh, I think we have thirty minutes. Oh, we have enough time. So 
Uh, can someone like tell me before uh, 10 minutes, like till the. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you All know. right, cool. So let's do a small, um, small walkthrough of the code. Let's focus one part. Um, let's see how to make let's see how to make uh this one the world date oops it's not world data there's a mistake world data chart okay so uh, let's just pick something up and work with it uh go to desktop where is desktop um the code architecture would be the so so there are two portions inside components are all the particular all the fragments and lives are the live pages so if we're going to look into that dashboard live you see this is just an ordinary uh, elixir module like a process you can handle event like when you click older oldest newer newest what it does is is basically um there is an index it increases the index when you go newer, near, uh, newer, and it decreases it when you're going for uh, older. But when you click on oldest, it goes to zero, and when you click on nearest, it goes to minus one. Which means the date traversal is done by we have an array of a uh, list of dates, and there is an index which like kind of um, moves around as a cursor and gives you the correct date, and the combination of dates and index changes the whole data because all of those data are taking up a fragment of the whole data. And that fragment of the data is shown, which is actually selected by the date and index. So if a dashboard live EX has a cousin called dashboard live HTML leaks, which is the view section of this process. So if you look into a control component, you see date for selected date, you have a date and selected index passed into it. For summary component, you also have date and selected index passed into it. And if you think of it as a, like you would, let's say if you're thinking in terms of React, if you consider that as a pie chart component with ID is world pie chart and data is like, the date for selected data so which would be like let's just say date for selected date so props dot world summary and so if you think of it like that something similar like something similar happens here so we are, we are given these information in the assigned section which is like the context for that particular um particular view and that thing gets painted there and you could like if I kill it, oh, this is a world view. So the pie chart component, the pie chart now, if you delete this, this one goes away. And the data of the pie chart would come from data for selected dates which is, again, if you look into data data for selected date, so you get a world summary, which is you are having a world summary from the first value here, and then you call that particular function. So now we got to figure out what world summary is. World summary is just the data that was given to it on mount. So when this when the COVID data, when this whole dashboard mounted, it was given a world summary data, which is basically the whole world's data from the beginning date till the end date. And if you look this function here, you can see if I do queries dot world data. So you have the whole data function. So this is basically all the data check the first one. So the active confirmed date that's um, recovered and this also is forced. So if you look into this data and if you look into here, it's a representation of it. Like you have the country name confirmed, recovered, deaths, and you have the source, which is exactly the similar, same as this. And you take the whole stream of the whole list of data 
and you can get from that one copy of data, you can get this, you can get this, and you can get a pie chart. You can basically get all the thing from that one chart. Now the question could be like, it is calling the database, right? I mean, it, it, it is, if, if I look into this code, world summary, um, it does have a pretty interesting uh, Ecto query where you're grouping it by date and then selecting all of these things. And you know, you're just summing the dates, coalescing it as zero for nil ones and you're doing a lot of shenanigans. So there is a SQL. So to get, to get, there is one thing that I was thinking about yesterday so that every time you click, like every time you click it, it's not gonna call anymore because the data set is there with you. Every time you click it, you're just accessing a different index of that particular data, which is based on date. But if this um, data, even if, if multiple people are logging into it, so the database hit a multiple times. So there is a there is a module called Nebulex. So I use that here as a like proof of concept. So whenever I'm calling this group by location or any database function, there's a thing called decorate. So whenever I call this, on the first hit, it automatically gets cached into ETS table. And then when subsequent calls are made, it's given from the cache instead of hitting the database. So if I call something, say, if I call next once, you'll see this database query. And then if I do previous, there won't be any query because previous data was already there. So that doesn't need any database query anymore. So that's uh, another topic for it. Um, so yes, so the, the basic idea is that there are a bunch of queries, which is communicating with the database and getting you the data. And those data become the mount, the value for the mounted views, in this case, uh, dashboard view. And this data gets shared by multiple components or either that data or a fragment of data gets shared by multiple all the components that they're using. For instance, um, in this case, um, the pie chart component here is getting called with data for selected date with world summary. And on the detail view, detail live. Um, so the same pie chart component is getting different data like country summary with dates and selected data. So you can also uh, ship it and you can you can give it completely different data and it'll still render a pie chart. So that's a smaller um, walkthrough of the code here. Um, just um, anything else? We you want questions? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I think we questions. have, uh, yeah, I can send you in a couple of ways. I, I think one question that I think you would be interested in, given what you were showing is, how did you interrupt with JavaScript? Oh, yes. Yeah, I totally forgot about it. So th that's a very interesting thing. Um, so let's just go back to PyChart. So PyChart is like, let's get into the component itself. Um, PyChart is... Okay, so if you look into the code here, so PyChart is a live component. And this is basically plain uh, Balma Balma code, um, but notice this portion called Phoenix hook. So with Phoenix hook, I am, and this line, uh, Phoenix update ignore, with, these, this, with this combination, I'm saying that, okay, so this will have a JavaScript hook name, by the name pie chart, and any update happening through this will be ignored by live views updater. So let's let's look into um, the database code for it. Uh, that's like the the JavaScript hook code for it. Uh, assets JS hooks. There is a uh, there is a index. So we, there's the list of all the hooks: the leaflet map hook, case chart hook, and the pie chart hook. Let's go there. This is the pie chart hook. So a hook will be mounted, and a hook will be updated. So Whenever a hook mounts, it can communicate with the JavaScript code, uh, with, with the live view code, with the simple uh, EL dataset statistics. So data set is like whatever I gave it as like, say data statistics equals whatever. So that value 
got parsed into data JavaScript structure here. And then you do the regular plotly chart of however you want to chart it. And then when you want to chart it, like basically just copy paste the plotly's pie chart code. So just this, um, the total pie chart will be rendered and it gets rendered. So uh, the way to communicate between JavaScript and um, uh, Elixir would be via this line. Uh, where is the data? So, yeah. So this line, Phoenix hook pie chart and data statistics, JSON data. So I've encoded the data into JSON format and gave it to pie chart. So when pie chart gets mounted, it gets, it collects that data from the EL data set and then it renders however it would, just making sure that total pie chart is there and total pie chart here, um, where is it? And total pie chart here is also a thing. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, total pie chart. And when data, when when the data set changes, when this one changes, like on React, you automatically it picks it up. But there, you have to do a small thing. So whenever data set changes, like you change from one date to another, the pie chart has to change to a different thing. So there's an updated hook where you parse the data up. Like whenever it changes, updated gets called. So in this callback, you just reparse it, and do plotly restyle to restyle the both data. So that's pretty much how database uh, JavaScript communication gets. If you look in the other hooks, like the map hook, same thing. You initialize the map and then you get the data set location and then generate the heat map on that particular ID. So think of it like uh, back in the olden days when Angular JS time, we used to do like take that data and then do it. Yeah, I, I, so Zaki is kind of like covering his face. So I think. Uh, well experienced with that. So yes, um, this is how you communicate. The, both way communication is possible. Like JavaScript can send back to um, uh, Elixir as well, but I never needed to use it. I could have used it if I used JavaScript date parser, date picker, but I got pissed off because of different reasons and decided to make my own. So that didn't happen. Hey, uh, I think we have time for at least another question. Uh, I'm gonna pick again on Andy here that asks, uh, is this one process per component or not, I guess is the question. Like, where are the servers here? I think it's one process per live, live page. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not but, sure about but the it. The components don't have a separate process. I mean, I think uh, they communicate, uh, they, you, they rely on the process from the parent page, uh, but you tell me because you're the one that actually has done more work yeah, here. So when, when, you send a when you send a data to uh, to the process, um, the component, it kind of hits back on the parent live page. And uh, like, for example, if you look into um, one code here, um, component, component, I think it's dashboard controller, controller. Control component. There it is. So see here we are sending it. Um, the, on click we click on oldest and we click on older. So once we click on these things, uh, that is actually captured not on the COVID control component but on the dashboard live. So dashboard live holds it. So it kind of gets up, but there are like two kinds of components. So some, you can actually send a comp send messages to itself with myself. Like if you add sometimes in some of the queries. So here, like in the calendar query, like I've added uh, this, this one gets in like hit on myself. So this way, I don't know, I've never thought of it as a like, if come to components or controller or process or not. So there are certain not processes when you're when they're you when they're like did they don't have an ID and they're relaying it to the parents. But in this case, would this be a component process? I'm not sure about it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Andy, if you're interested, I think we have a video up from the last meetup that uh, had a different live you talk, but uh, quite a different subject, but there is some stuff about that there too, I think. If you go on the on the Toronto Elixir website, um, or you look for us on YouTube. 
What else do we have here? Any more questions? Uh, no, I don't think so. Anybody else that wants to ask uh, a question? Feel free to unmute yourself as well if you want. Or type. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, well then, uh, thank you, Mafinar. This was great. I'm uh, so overall. Uh, you were skeptical at the beginning. I guess the last question is, what are your feelings right now? Yes, I'm certainly not skeptical uh, anymore. And um, unless I wouldn't mind uh, make putting on all, all the UIs for my per per personal projects with uh, Live View. Uh, this this has been a very pleasant experience. Um, I had I was fully in control of my code and not just a drop in uh, drop in a model and hope that it works so that I, that didn't happen so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about it uh, but there are some smaller issues like I really wish the ID story for elixir was a bit better like uh, like even in case of Python like there are lots of like easier uh, refactoring facilities that I'm given by the ID here I couldn't I, I had been through a lot of trouble uh, when I was renaming one topic and moving things around. So that's a, that's a little bit of a inconvenience for me. But mm -hmm. other than that, um, for no, for smaller projects, uh, like or, or for you projects that are not that UI heavy, I would certainly uh, try to use Live View because it's a good experience. <laughs> yeah.